All right, what are we doing? That gets my goat. I thought we had retired that. And welcome, everybody, With the, on that note, to That Gets My Goat. I am Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield. And if you don't mind, I'd like to talk for a couple of minutes about a subject that's very dear to me. Okay. And it's a subject we've talked about before, but my guess is, as long as this show goes, we'll keep talking about it. There's okay. been a ton of news about Star Wars, about a new trilogy, about Disney acquiring Lucasfilm, about Mark Hamill coming back in Episode 7. Just a, a bunch of really exciting news or, or scary news. or just, Well, it's definitely news because uh, we've got developments of things that, that haven't been going on in almost a decade. Right. And we could easily have done several episodes about the news as it comes to light. And, and, and I'm sure we will as we find out more and more about these new films. But uh, recently, Lucasfilm has announced that in addition to a new trilogy, they're going to do several standalone films. And uh, a month ago in February, on February 6th, Walt Disney Company announced that they were developing a standalone film featuring Han Solo, which would take place between Star Wars Episode Three. And a new hope. Okay, so before the first, before the real Star Wars happens. Yes. <laughs> and they've also announced that they're going to do a Yoda standalone movie and that they're going to do a Boba Fett standalone movie. And it's funny because one of these things is not like the other to me. I can totally see how you do a Boba Fett movie. Although maybe that's difficult because you have to come up with, well, is he going to be an anti-hero? Is it... Are we just going to come out and say this is a good guy in this movie? Are we going to do him as a some kind of bad guy that gets pulled into something where he's forced to be a good guy for a little while or he's forced to work with the good guys before he goes off and does bad things? Are, are we going to find out what made Boba Fett into a bad guy? You know, I, I don't know. But I can see the potential for story in Bo a Boba Fett movie. But what's weird is... Even though Yoda is over 900 years old, I, I can't see how you do a Yoda movie. Yeah, I don't see it either. It seems like it would be even hard. Maybe that's not... I'm, I don't know what movie there is out there that is that way, but having Yoda as the main character seems like it would be hard to do. It's hard to relate with a alien. It's hard to relate with an alien that's as tall as your knee. I don't know. I guess we'll see how it goes, but at the very least, it seems like Disney has got the right idea with Star Wars, and they understand, make a bunch of movies, there's no reason not to, you're just going to make a gajillion dollars off of this, go for it. So, you know, I can't complain about them making a Yoda movie, hopefully they can do a good job of it. Doesn't seem like the obvious fit, but... I liked Yoda in Return of the Jedi and Empire Strikes Back, so there's that. Maybe I'll like this one. Well, yeah, and I'm hoping so, too. I'm hoping that whoever is in charge of that particular project is passionate about it and loves Yoda at least as much as I did 20 years ago, and they have a good take on it, and they're not just there to get a paycheck. Right. Because I think I could write a hell of a han solo movie myself and i could probably write a really good boba fett movie if i had the right take on it but i have no idea how i could write a good yoda movie yeah yoda is despite the prequels an all-knowing wise mentor character i mean it's kind of like let's make a movie that's just mr miyagi right let's make a movie that's just gandalf and although gandalf i think could work but but there's there needs to be a character that is us right that is not super super wise and not super super powerful that we can relate to uh, just i mean that's how these things work if you have a a perfect character and and the old the the original trilogy yoda was a perfect character well where's the conflict going to come from people who are ineptly trying to kill that perfect character yeah, I don't know. That uh, that seems like not enough conflict for a film, if you know what I mean. 
There needs to be something that your character learns by way of the ordeal about themselves or so forth. And Yoda might be too old to learn anything more. You can't teach an old whatever he may be new tricks. Maybe it'll be a super duper prequel that from 900 years ago when he was just a young whippersnapper. That's not a bad. Maybe you'll find that when he was young, he was actually 10 feet tall and he shrank all those years until he wound up as what he is. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but starting at a point where Yoda was not perfect and not wise is interesting, but it's just like any of these prequel things where you take somebody who's super powerful or super smart, you run the risk of demystifying this character. You run the risk of taking what was special about them and saying, you know what? They're just people. Now, if they do Yoda Begins and they sort of do the origin story of how Yoda became Yoda and his tragic backstory and all that, maybe it would work. Seeing him make mistakes and seeing him become wise and become super powerful I'm just, again, glad that I'm not in charge of that project. Yeah, maybe it'll be one of those where they look at it and then finally go, yeah, that's not going to work, and they just kill it. Because they seem to do that here and there and fairly often in Hollywood. Yes, that's true. I don't know that these things are set in stone. They may change their minds on something, or or, you know, they may create an all-new character, which I think is a good idea, that's set in the Star Wars universe in a different timeline than the Star Wars characters that we know so that they can go anywhere and do anything. And that's pretty much what I think they need to do in the sequel trilogy is come up with a bunch of new characters and do not depend on any of the characters that we have grown, that we have loved for these 35 years, unless it's R2 and 3PO so that organically they can go in any direction. And if there is a breakout character or whatever, then they can spin that character off. But don't create a character saying, this is going to be our breakout character. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's what I was saying uh, that they ought to do with the trilogy. The next, the sequel trilogy, is that it should be set some 20 or 30 years in the future. And you could have still Luke, Han, Leia, etc. But now they're old and you can use the same actors even. And then we follow this younger generation and what they have to do to save the Republic or whatever. You know, they have to come up with new tariffs and they have to embargo the planet of Naboo and all the really interesting stuff that happens in the Star Wars universe. Mm. (laughs) You know, I don't think we ever talked about J.J. Abrams being announced as the director of Episode 7 either, but I guess we can still talk about that at some point. Yeah, but today might even be a good day for that. Well, maybe, but but what I really wanted to ask you about was the Han Solo movie. Because of the three, that's the one I'm most excited about. The Solo Han movie? Ah. Yeah, and I guess we should get those puns out of the way. (laughs) Because if this movie happens, can you just imagine, like, the USA Today headline? I'd prefer not to. Good, good. I think we're on the same page there. I love the character of Han Solo. I love Han my two favorite characters in this, the trilogy are Darth Vader and Han Solo. And Han Solo has not been ruined in the last decade. So, you know, I, I, I have a lot of passion for him. I love Harrison Ford. I love the arc that the character has. I know there are people that don't like the arc. That he's like, oh, okay. Solo becomes a pussy in Return of the Jedi. I love that he's not the same guy when that final movie is over. Just as Luke is not the same guy. They, there is a journey for this character. And Joss Whedon has described Firefly as uh, making a TV series out of Han Solo. I was just like, yeah, you're right. That's kind of what's going on on that. And I just, yeah, I, I love Malcolm Reynolds. Maybe that's why we love it so much. And you can see in Malcolm Reynolds a lot of Han Solo. And it appears that we'll never see Malcolm Reynolds again. But amazingly, it looks like we're going to see Han Solo again. And I just wondered what your feelings on that are, uh, if you're uh, positive or negative about it or both. Uh, You know, I am positive about it. I guess it'll be hard to see someone else be Han Solo after all these years because no one has ever been Han Solo but Han Solo. You know, it's not like James Bond where it's played by somebody different every third movie. 
trying to think of other characters. You know, eventually a character gets old. You know, Indiana Jones has always been played by Harrison Ford. Even in Indiana 4, where he's the old guy, it's still him. And this one's going to be different. I remember uh, when they first talked about Disney buying Star Wars up, you know, they're like, oh yeah, you're positive about it now, but just wait until you see this. And then they have Luke, Leia, and Han standing there next to each other, and they've Photoshop their faces so that it's like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber and like one of the Jonas Brothers or something playing their characters. And it's just like, oh yeah, maybe. uh." So it's hard to say. I mean, I assume that a Han Solo movie will be good, but now we're going to have to have somebody else be Han, especially if it's going to be a prequel to the Han Solo that we know. It's before... He even got that far, so it's got to be a young actor, and uh, I don't know. Who knows what we'll get? Um, I thought that the prequels would come out really good because they put together a bunch of actors who they all had chops. They all had good performances in other films, but in— Not Jake Lloyd. Well, okay, sorry, not Jake Lloyd, but uh, I was I was thinking more of— you know, Ewan McGregor and Samuel L. Jackson and Liam Neeson and the names of the, you know, the actors that you keep saying. Even, uh, <clears throat> what's her face, uh, Natalie Portman, and all, you know, a very young person at the time. Even she had already had films where she'd been impressive in. And so you just expected better. But uh, maybe it's just that George Lucas didn't know how to direct people. Or whatever it was, you didn't get better. You got worse. So hopefully, oh, we don't get that. Because yeah, Han Solo is one of those characters that I really love. I loved him when I was younger. I, I used to try and figure out how to do that kind of crooked smile that uh, Harrison Ford would do for him when he'd be like, "Hey, it's me," <laughs> and. I would sit there and look at myself in the mirror and try and figure out how to do that crooked smile so that I could be cool like Han Solo. It didn't work out, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, ho- I hope it works out. It will be very cool to see the further adventures of Han Solo or the pre-adventures of Han Solo. <laughs> I just hope it, it's as good as I hope it will be. But, you know, no matter what, it's better than nothing which is what we've had up until now. So that will be cool. This, this idea of the standalone movie, has the, do you think that there's been any conversation of, hey, well, why does it have to be a standalone movie? Let's see how many adventures Han can have before they find him in the Mos Eisley Cantina and recruit him in Star Wars. Because I, I would hope that it's not like an X-Men first class kind of movie which i understand a lot of people like but that movie was not intended to have a sequel it was just like well we're going to do a prequel and we're going to do everything up to the point where x-men one begins and and it just to me that it ends up being a huge mess in the the ending of that film when they jam a a lot of stuff in there that, that could have been in its own film just so that they can get you from point a to point b I mean, I would love to see them spend a long time with Han discovering that he wants to be a pilot or discovering that a smuggler is the life for me or discovering, hey, this Wookiee is really, really cool. You know, I like to be around this guy. And and none of those things are, you know, giant space battle kind of epic things. They're all personal things. I like the idea of seeing him trust the wrong person and get betrayed and that makes him hard or harder than he was less naive something made him the guy who was a loner who only looked out for himself that we see at the beginning of star wars but i would love to see them do a whole series of movies and each one i mean maybe there's one that's like super romantic about hans finally you know he falls in love or maybe there's a whole movie about his rescue of Chewbacca and their lifelong friendship. And maybe there's a whole movie about how he finally gets the Falcon from Lando Calrissian. I mean, I don't know. I I know a lot of people are afraid 
that making standalone movies or making spinoffs or making another trilogy is going to dilute the franchise. But I think you and I both agree it's diluted, man. Yeah, totally. It's uh, it's that it's too late. You can't close the barn door after the cows have already gone. Or is it horse? I think it's prostitute. Oh, okay. A different kind of barns, I guess, in your town than mine. Yeah, it's it's already been. You know, you've already taken it and done with it what they did in the prequels. So there's no ruining the franchise. The franchise has been drugged through the mud. And uh, only thing, you know, you can either keep dragging it through the mud, which may be what they're going to do, we don't know, or you can get the hose out and wash it off and make it look nice again. But just leaving it in the mud and doing nothing is is not going to help anything. So we can just remember what it might have been like before it got dirty. Uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's not going to happen. I think... I'm sure that that conversation has come up. Why does it have to be a standalone movie? I'm sure any of these movies, they're basically throwing stuff against the wall to see if any of it sticks. And so they're like, well, let's make a Han Solo movie. There's somebody who likes Han Solo and he'll write it. Let's make a Yoda movie. Uh, this guy wants to write a Yoda movie. Okay. And anything I think that makes enough money... To be worthwhile, I think they'll keep con- continuing on. And yeah, I hope they do it like, uh, you know, you were saying, where they don't make it like the X-Men movie, where they jam everything in so that there's no possibility for a sequel, but then they make a sequel anyways. The standalone, I guess, means a one movie and not a continuing series. Well, I th- And not that it's a just the this character, not any of the other characters kind of a thing, right? I, you know, I, I don't know. It may be I, that standalone means it's apart from the new trilogy. Yeah, see, that's what I thought you meant when you were saying standalone movies and not just... Although, when it comes down to it, I don't have any problem with just, hey, here's a Star Wars adventure kind of a movie, you know, and you just have... It's the adventure of Yoda before he was Yoda or the adventure of this is Luke putting together the new Jedi Academy, et cetera, et cetera. You know, how did Dexter Jetser get so dirty? Yeah. How how did he get that diner that we see? It's 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 a really interesting story. But yeah, you know, I'm happy to have any of those kind of things to watch. And, uh, you know, whatever turns out to be good is good. And I, I was actually suggesting that they do something like this a long time ago, you know, five years ago or whatever, when they finished off the prequel trilogy. You know, why not just get a capable director? And I was saying, you know, somebody like a Ridley Scott or, or you know, somebody, James Cameron or whoever, you know, and these, this is five years ago directors that I was thinking of or, or more. But, you know, somebody like that who's proven themselves capable of making a good movie and give them a shot at a Star Wars, making a good star, you know, and just they don't have to sign on for an, a lifetime of doing Star Wars movies. They just do one. And, uh, you know, I was saying, why don't we do that with Star Wars? It doesn't have to be dead. It looks like Disney had a similar idea and they're going to go for it and they're going with J.J. Abrams. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty excited. The fact that there are... Six movies of Star Wars in the works is just pretty incredible, considering that there are six movies of Star Wars altogether, unless you count the two Ewok adventures, which I guess makes it eight. Well, did you feel like the Ewok adventure and the Ewok battle for Endor diluted the franchise? No, not at all. They were much lesser known. I think a lot of people don't even realize they exist. They were, what, made-for-TV movies, right? So right. it didn't get as much. And I also, I guess there's that Clone Wars movie, that CG. That's a good point. Movie that came out in the theaters. One, I don't think that that one diluted the franchise in any way. I, I never felt that there was a problem with that either. Uh, did you see it? No, I still have not seen it. Yeah. I- it's set in the world that I don't care about, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I, I'm much that way as well. And yeah, if they decided that they were going to do an Ahsoka Tano solo movie, I could. there are some that I could skip. You know, I don't know. It just, I, I'm sure 
there are people that, well, in fact, I know there are people that love that character and maybe there's a lot to love. I've just not watched the Clone Wars show, so it, I don't have an emotional investment in any of them, really. Right. But uh, I do have an emotional investment in Han and uh, to a lesser extent to Chewie. Oh, I, I just, I, I hope they don't blow it. I know that there's a ton of money riding on it. So you'd think that they would work extra hard on that, but that's never stopped people from screwing up before. Um, <laughs> and true enough, audiences tend to some audiences tend not to be very discerning. I mean, someday I, I always planned for you and I to sit down and just have the anti transformers conversation to end all the anti transformers conversations where basically I was just, I, I wanted to say, you know, if you love Transformers, if you love those characters or the toys or whatever, you deserve better. Stand up straight. Have a little <laughs> respect for yourself. You are a person. You deserve better than this. And uh, we never had to have that conversation. But it remains true. You know, the, the lamest character in the Star Wars universe could have a good story made for him if somebody only cares. And uh, I, uh, I, Han Solo, to me, is, is at the very top of that pyramid of characters. Please tread lightly when dealing with Han Solo. You know, please understand who the character of Han Solo is before you, you make this movie and, and try and understand why we like him so much. And, and one very, very final thing. Everybody has mentioned it in the last geez can you believe it's been 15 years but Han Solo's creator George Lucas apparently didn't understand the character because of the whole Greedo has to shoot first and the cold blooded killer thing I just I, I whoever is making this Han Solo movie uh, I, I would hope that they understand why it's okay that Han shot Greedo I think George Lucas understood his character to begin with, or else we wouldn't have had what we had, but he unfortunately lost sight of it as the years went by until he thought, oh no, Han's a bad guy, I can't let him be a bad guy, I gotta do something. So, yeah, so look, I, you know, I've never seen that uh, altered scene. Wait, what? I've never watched the altered scene. I have only the original films, and I've never even looked at it to see how this Han shooting first crap happened and what it looks like and et cetera. I may have seen like a quick thing of it on like a documentary about Star Wars or something like that, but I've never actually watched the version of uh, Star Wars where he shot first. Or did he? He didn't do that in... No, it was in a later special. The first special edition, there, they didn't do that, right? There are three versions. For 20 years, Han just shot Greedo through the table. Mm -hmm. And then in the 97 special edition, he had Greedo shoot, and they digitally made Han sort of like dodge it. But, it, I mean, it looked terrible. It's like his upper body moved, but his lower body stayed the same. And then for the 2003... DVD release, they altered it again so that they both fire around the same time, but Greedo just misses, even though he's point blank, and and Han actually shoots him. But it's 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 so funny that 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 remains a point of contention. That that remains such a, I I feel passionate about it too, and it's a stupid thing, but it's just it it's one of those things, like I'm I'm trying to think of. You know, putting a fig leaf on the, the Michelangelo's David right. kind of thing where it's just like, yes, but for hundreds of years that has been acceptable. But now it isn't? And it's like, well, after Janet Jackson. <laughs> I don't get it. But, yeah, let's hope that the, the whoever's doing this movie knows better. I think that they probably do. I think that pretty much everybody behind this whole Disney thing is not the kind of people that are that were behind the prequels. So I think we uh, will be better off 
But who knows? Maybe I'm totally wrong, and they're all just a bunch of bastard money grubbers, and they don't give a shit about any of this stuff. Guess we'll find out. I guess we will. But it is an exciting time to live, much like that <laughs> ominous Chinese curse. <laughs> It sure is. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I think about how cool it was when I was a kid and there was a Star Wars movie that came out every three years for a short period of time. And I think about my son who was just born, he just had his one year birthday the other day and uh, he's basically going to, I mean, this is going to happen every year or so for the rest of his life probably. I don't know if Disney's ever going to be able to run this franchise into the ground to the point where they'll stop making movies of it. You know, you're going to have as many Star Wars movies coming out as you have Marvel movies coming out, it seems. You and I haven't gotten together in a couple weeks. Yeah, well, anyways, we, we, probably, take a, we probably have uh, to Yeah, we should sign to, off. <laughs> All right, so yeah, the, I don't know. Uh, I'm really excited and also a little nervous about how things are going to go, but I wouldn't trade it for the world, that's for sure. I'm really excited to have it actually happen one way or another. For good or ill, I'm excited for it to, to happen. All right, and I'm again, I'm sure we will talk about these things as they develop. Right. In the meantime... I have been Rish Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. Thanks for listening, everybody. Your mountain is waiting. Get on your way. Never tell me the odds. <laughs> hey, that's not your catchphrase. <clears throat> you know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? And, uh, you know, I didn't end up seeing it until video. You never saw Empire, right? In theater? You you saw Jedi first, right? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. To t- it's hard to I say, to so. tell you the truth. I mean, that was the one that came out when I was old enough now to really be with it. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when Empire Strikes Back came out. I didn't see it in the theater. I remember coming to school starting in first grade and all the kids being like, oh, yeah, and this happened. You remember when the giant worm came out of the asteroid and tried, oh, that was so cool. And I remember seeing the giant worm on the commercials for it, but I didn't. I hadn't seen the movie yet. I See, I also never saw Turn of the Jedi in the theater. I think I saw it on video. Oh, it's hard to say exactly when I saw what, but I'm pretty sure I'd seen Return of the Jedi already before I ever saw Star Wars. But I kind of knew them somehow anyways, you know? Well, do you think from, like, the read-along books and things like that? or Yeah, probably. I mean, we did have that. This is the story of Star Wars. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it's time, time to turn, turn the page when, when you hear R2-D2 R2 R2 beep. Like this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just, you knew the story anyways, whether you saw it or not. I think the first time I saw the movie itself was when it came on TV, which was a big event, I remember. Yeah, that would have been 84. Was that when it was? Yeah, that was when I first saw Star Wars itself. But at some point, we owned the DVD, or the VHS tapes of it, so... um. Yeah, I don't know when, you know, what the order of all that stuff really was, unfortunately. I also had the uh, novelizations. I bought the novelization of Return of the Jedi from the little school book club that you, you used to... You remember you used to have those little things? Yeah, so did I. And so I had that from that. I remember used to read through that, and if I, if they ever mentioned a name of somebody, I'd be like, there's not a figure of this guy. They need a figure of... Who got a boogie? <laughs> Whatever. I had no idea even what this guy might look like or, you know, et cetera. But I'm just like, there's a name here and it's not a figure. <laughs> of course, now there's a figure of all of them and then some.